Let's discuss the lab you recently did showing how salts can conduct electricity in water. And we're going to ask two questions. What makes solutions of three salts in water conduct electricity almost as well as metals like copper? And secondly, why are the slopes of the conductivity versus concentration different for each salt that you've dissolved in the water. Well, let's go back to the question, what is an electric current? You're familiar with electric current probably since you were a kid. Well, electric currents are moving charged particles. And we think of them usually as electrons moving in a wire. And that's, of course, how we get all kinds of power consuming devices to work by sending electrons through the wire. Here are the facts. Dry sodium chloride, magnesium chloride, and aluminum chloride will not conduct electricity under any circumstances. This is an experiment we can do, but it's just really, really boring, so there's no reason to do it. We've tried it. It doesn't work. However, when you take sodium chloride and dissolve it in water, or magnesium chloride or aluminum chloride, they do conduct electricity when dissolved in water. And the more drops you add, the higher the conductivity is. So something is happening with those salts in water that is causing them to conduct electricity, and the electricity conducted is dependent on the amount of the salt that's been added. So, a hypothesis. We need to explain how it is that the salts are insulators when they're dry, but become conductive when they are in water solution. And not only that, but look at our graphs. This is, of course, an idealized graph. Yours may look a little different from this, but you did see that the slopes of the lines are different, so that even at the same concentration, equal numbers of drops of the different solutions gave different conductivities. What do you think caused the increase in conductivity as we changed from sodium chloride to aluminum chloride? Talk about this with your discussion partner. We'll shut off the video so that you can have that conversation and maybe even draw some pictures. Let's move forward in our discussion. Suppose we hypothesize that the salts are breaking up into charged particles when they dissolve. Would that explain how they can convey an electric current? Well, let's look. How would that explain this? Again, take a moment with your discussion partner to discuss how that might explain how it is that the sodium chloride had a lower conductivity than the magnesium chloride and the aluminum chloride had the highest conductivity at all. So we've started up the video again and let's see if we can explain the increase of aluminum chloride over the other two salts. Perhaps the salts with more atoms in them will break up into more charged particles. So we have here something called a net ionic equation. It shows a unit of sodium chloride solid breaking up into sodium ions, which are positively charged, and the AQ means they're dissolved in water. It stands for aqueous. Sodium ions and chloride ions surrounded by water. And the aluminum chloride, since there are three chlorides for every aluminum, seems to be able to break up into an aluminum ion and three chlorides. The salts with more atoms in them seem to be breaking up into more charged particles, and the evidence for that is that the same number of drops of the same concentration solution gives you a higher conductivity with the aluminum chloride than with the sodium chloride or the magnesium chloride. 
So let's see if we can visualize on a submicroscopic scale how the salt is breaking up in the water. The salt starts off as a regular solid, held together by plus to minus attraction, which is very strong. But when you add water, the water molecules seem to have enough energy to separate the charged particles. Maybe there's something special about water that does this, because if we try it with alcohol, for instance, it will not conduct electricity with the salt. So you see here the sodium and the chloride ions separated by the water molecules, but they're now, now mobile. The water molecules are enabling the charged particles to swim around and conduct a current when subjected to plus and minus charges from the electrodes of the conductivity probe. Ions are charged atom and molecule sized particles. Many ionic solids are soluble in water and will conduct electricity, have a conductivity. But some, as you've seen in the precipitation experiment, some like lead iodide are either not soluble or not very soluble because they form solids and they stay solids in water. That must mean that the ions of lead and iodide are too tightly bound together for water to break them up. And so they remain as a solid or they form as a solid as soon as they hit each other. Lead, lead iodide is an insoluble yellow solid. Now, where are the metallic ions that you used found on the periodic table? Well, you can see them right here. Now, we have ignored the transition metals that you usually see here in the middle. These are the representative elements here on the left and on the right. And if we ignore the transition metals, the elements, sodium and magnesium, have one and two chlorides connected to them. And then aluminum has three. So it looks like the column position in the periodic table, first column, second column, and what we might call a third column of the representative elements, gives you the number of chlorides that they are bound with in the salt. This is worth considerable more investigation. For instance, we might be able to test potassium, calcium, and gallium chloride in the same way we did with the sodium, magnesium, and aluminum, and see if we get similar slopes on those lines. That's for perhaps later on, further investigation. You can take a look at that. But for now, it looks like the water is breaking up the salts into individual charged particles called ions.